Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'd like to talk to you about the process of your blood clotting. Now, this is something that's pretty familiar to most of us. There, there's got to be a time in your life where you've had an injury, like for example, if you're riding your bike and you had a, and you had a spill, and there's blood kind of gushing out of your, your knee here. Sorry for the graphic picture. Uh, but then, you know, interestingly enough, the blood stops and it clots. And we're familiar with this. And so this video is going to be a brief discussion or kind of an overview discussion, perhaps not so brief, on hemostasis. In other words, the stopping of the blood. And so let's take a look at that. It's kind of mysterious in some ways, you know, how, how, how come this is happening? Well, I think it's obvious the reason that blood is coming out is that it, there's been damage to a blood vessel. So if there's a blood vessel t tear, obviously the trauma has penetrated the skin and reached the dermis, uh, or perhaps even further. But if it's damaged a blood vessel in the dermal layer of the, of the skin, and a blood vessel is ruptured, there's going to be blood gushing out. And so blood is, is kind of complicated. It's got red cells, white cells, platelets, all kinds of protein and plasma. So it's all coming out. So what I want to talk to you about is three basic processes that stop the blood from bleeding. And so those involve uh, blood va vessel spasm. So in other words, the blood vessel is going to actually um, attempt to um, constrict to prevent further blood loss. And then platelets, these little tiny uh, cellular fragments called thrombocytes, are going to form like a little plug, but it's not that strong, but it's a, but it, it's a good quick fix. And then ultimately the blood's going to coagulate or clot. So there's going to be three phases to this process. So let's get into that. So the very first one is when there's damage to a blood vessel and there's blood leaking out, one of the interesting things about it is that <clears throat> when you cut the blood vessel, the blood's coming out, but the blood vessel itself is surrounded in one of its tunics or, or layers by smooth muscle. And that smooth muscle is capable of contracting uh, what we like to call vasospasm. And so let me, let me emphasize that, vasospasm or va vasoconstriction. And so um, what's interesting is the damaged cells surrounding it send off chemical messages which cause the, the muscle to contract and there's also some nerve impulse that can do that as well. And so as it turns out the constriction of the of the muscle uh, only lasts for a few minutes but it, it initiates the first phase of the stopping the blood from uh, from happening. So in other words it's just basically as you can see here constricting this is like in the brain but a vasospasm is a constriction of the blood vessel to prevent further blood loss. Okay, and so what's fascinating here is the second part of uh, hemostasis is platelet blood formation. So in our blood, we have these little tiny fragments called platelets. And what happens is when these things are cruising by in the blood and there's a, a, a damage to the vessel, these platelets attach to collagen fibers which are also part of blood vessels and so they they attach and they have these little extensions on them let me show you this picture here um, platelets have these little arm-like appendages that stick out here's a picture of them under the light microscope it allows them to be very adhesive to one another do you see them right here they have all these little extensions kind of reminds me of a barrel of monkeys if you remember playing that as a child sort of these little hooks that will attach to one another. And so what they do is that not only do they adhere to each other, but they attach to the damaged uh, blood vessel, preventing further blood loss. And they do that by attaching to collagen, which is uh, thread-like proteins uh, making up blood vessels. And so they form a plug, and it's, it, it's more efficient if the blood vessel is really small, that truth be known. But it's temporary and it, and it prevents further blood loss and so it's pretty good and so one just a side note on platelets in general uh, platelets they come from the bone so platelets are born in red bone marrow just like all the other cellular components like erythrocytes and leukocytes but they come from this ancestral cell called a megakaryocyte it's called that because it has a giant nucleus right there and so they're the cytoplasm literally brand, uh, 
buds off into platelets. And so what you're seeing here is the red bone marrow. This is under the light microscope. And so the normal platelet count, if you're, if you're into this sort of thing, is, is 130,000 to 360,000 platelets, again, in a milliliter of blood. And so here again is a picture of erythrocytes. This is the plasma here. These are the, these are the platelets here. But I'm, I'll circle them. These are the thrombocytes. And so this is a cartoon drawing of them. And so the platelets are very important in terms of the clotting process. And I'll get into this. And so here are three uh, cellular components of the blood. Erythrocytes, thrombocytes, and leukocytes. Leukocytes, you might be familiar, are the only true cell because they, they possess a nucleus. And so in the marrow of the blood, you've got these intermediate precursors coming from a hemocytoblast uh, cell. So in other words, the stem cell. And so let's focus in over on this side. The megakaryocyte is the one that's going to form platelets. So that's kind of interesting. And so here you have, uh, so this is your skin. Uh, it, there, there's, it's bleeding. There's blood flowing out right here, blood flowing out. And so what's happening in that vasoconstriction, let's go back to that for a second. These are smooth muscle cells. These cells are contracting and uh, causing a spasm to reduce blood loss. But then platelets, as they're cruising by, are attaching to these collagen, exposed collagen fibers that make up um, one of the layers of a blood vessel right here, as you can see. And now when they start to attach to those collagen, they release the thrombocytes themselves, release chemicals. Now there's a lot of clotting factors here. And, platelet factors, but I'm not going to get into names and things, but just simply, it's kind of interesting. These release chemicals, which then actually attract more platelets to the area. So it's kind of like a little platelet party here. And so this causes an aggregate of platelets forming a plug. And so you're certain like stopping the blood from, from uh, oozing out. And so it's pretty effective. However, it's not permanent. So what you really have to do is get the blood to clot, and that's the, the third phase. But before I go on to blood clotting, I wanted to, uh, to note that sometimes individuals need transfusions of platelets because they're either lacking them or they're not effective in, in, in a particular way. And so I'm not sure if you knew about this, but when you, if you've ever been to a blood bank or a hospital to donate whole blood, you can actually, if you wanted to do that, it's great, and the whole blood can be separated into different components, and it can save many lives. But I'm not sure if you knew that you can go to the blood bank and actually donate just your platelets. And so there's a platelet phoresis process that can take blood out of your arm, separate the platelets, and then return the rest of the blood back into your body so you can donate just platelets. So think about that. And you can donate platelets more frequently than you can whole blood. And so as it turns out, uh, this is sort of an overview of what's happening here. Again, not shown is the is the vasospasm, but then once the blood is, is leaking out, as you can hear blood, and see the blood's escaping, there's blood, and so there, then there's a platelet plug, and, and then the aggregate forms, and so the platelets adhere to each other and, and to the collagen fibers, as, as, uh, as we talked about. So the, f the third and final phase of the blood uh, stopping bleeding, or hemostasis, is blood coagulation, or blood clot, and so that involves and it's the most effective means. And it involves a very complex uh, mechanism of many different clotting factors. But I'm just going to go into some of the basic ones. Believe it or not, though it may appear detailed, it's just the basics of how blood clots. And so what you're seeing here is a scanning electron micrograph of a mesh-like protein called fibrin. And so a blood clot is a protein called fibrin, and it literally sort of like cheesecloth, catches all of this, the blood in it, and it prevents blood from continuing to bleed. And so therefore, the blood clots. And so you're like, well, the question we have going into this is, how does this fibrin form, and what, what's the story with it? And so fibrin, <clears throat> as again, you can see here, is a mesh-like uh, insoluble protein that forms when there's uh, a damage to a blood vessel, which causes the blood to stop bleeding. But as it turns out, in our blood normally, and I find this extremely fascinating, in our blood normally, 
we have this protein called fibrinogen, and it's a precursor. It's a protein, but it's soluble in the blood. So it's cruising along, cruising along, just anticipating a blood vessel tear, and then it will be converted to an insoluble. This is what we mean by insoluble, that it's coming out. It's precipitating out of solution, forming an insoluble protein called fibrin, and that actually forms the, this mesh that catches the blood and, and causes a clot. So that's what we're looking at, a clot. And so the simple notion of blood clotting is the conversion of the plasma protein fibrinogen into fibrin. There you have it. But of course, you're going to have a question about that. You're going to say, well, you know, what causes fibrinogen to become fibrin? And you're like, well, I, a damage to the blood vessel. But, but there's a chemical reason why fibrinogen turns to fibrin. And the truth is, um, you know, abnormally, you don't want this to be occurring all the time. This would be very damaging. Uh, you only want it to occur after there is damage to cells. Uh, and so let's check this out. So here's an overview, so sort of the sky cam view of this. So there's a tear in your blood vessel. There's damaged tissue. And so we talked about this. Number one was the blood vessel tries to spasm to prevent further blood loss. There's platelet plugs. And then now we're going to be talking about the clotting mechanism. Okay. And so how does the blood clot, which is the most effective means of stopping the blood? And so I discussed this down here. I said that in the blood, okay, in the blood, there's uh, a protein called fibrinogen that's cruising along, and it gets converted with the help of calcium to fibrin, and that's what forms the mesh, the fibrin, which forms the blood clot. And so what I want to get into is what causes fibrinogen to turn into fibrin? And so that's, that's our conversation. And so as it turns out, there's, uh, I'll, I'll go in reverse. Uh, there's a enzyme called thrombin, okay? There's an enzyme called thrombin that converts fibrinogen into fibrin. And so thrombin is the one that does it. You're like, well, like, well, where did that come from? Well, there's a precursor to thrombin called prothrombin. It also requires calcium for the conversion, but it requires this protein. It's a different enzyme-like protein called prothrombin activator. Once this activator is present after the tissue is damaged, then this converts the prothrombin to thrombin and then fibrinogen into fibrin and you have a blood clot, okay? I know that's a little tricky, but it's actually just an overview of the process. And so here's something. So when there's a, a tear like this in a blood vessel, and we're talking about a blood clot, which is what you can see right here. So there, the damaged tissue themselves uh, release chemicals uh, called thromboblastin. So that's kind of cool. The damaged cells release chemicals which lead to the production of that prothrombin activator. And so let's go back to this for a second. Prothrombin activator was the one that was turning prothrombin into thrombin. And so the damaged cells are actually causing that formation of thrombin to occur. Once you have that enzyme, then you're good to go because then, then that enzyme catalyzes the conversion of insoluble, I'm, so, I'm sorry, soluble fibrinogen into fibrin. And so here you can see that the protein is sort of like a mesh and this is what you're doing is causing a clot to occur. And so these are all threads of protein called fibrin. It's the major event, and it's what catches the blood and stops it from bleeding any further. And so, again, I mentioned this before, but you don't want this to happen abnormally. And so I wanted to just point it out that a clot that forms abnormally in a vessel can be very dangerous. It's called a thrombus. And, it, and it, if there is a thrombus that occurs, let me just put it right here. If there's a thrombus that occurs, a clot, it'll actually block the blood and prevent blood from traveling beyond that point. And that can actually result in, if this was the heart, that can result in lack of oxygen to the heart muscle and cause a heart attack. Or a thrombus can actually, if it was in a crucial blood vessel, I think all the blood vessels are crucial in the brain, could result in a stroke. And then what's also kind of fascinating is that a thrombus can become dislodged. And it actually like cruises around in the bloodstream so this big kind of abnormal clot is cruising along, 
And if it becomes dislodged, it's called an embolus. And that can be very dangerous too because a thrombus in a non-threatening area can become an embolus and then travel to the brain or a coronary artery in the heart and cause real serious lethal damage. So you don't want these things. And so here's an example of, a, of an abnormal clot called a thrombus right here. And so these are kind of frightening. These things, sometimes you don't notice it um, because there's still blood flow uh, around it, but then sometimes they'll become dislodged and uh, travel into an area where the body does uh, need uh, the blood to occur. And so let me conclude with um, a little uh, animation that I found here that I found it particularly interesting. So picture yourself in the morning cutting yourself a nice bagel and you're starting off the day and then whoops, uh-oh, there's a little ouch there and there's some blood. So what happens, the reason there's blood coming out is because the blood vessel is torn. And so there's blood leaking out. Um, here's all the red, the red blood cells. Your plasma is in here. There's the platelets or thrombocytes, where, which are important in a platelet plug. And the various clotting factors or plasma proteins that I was referring to in a moment, a moment ago. So here's the blood coming out. It's not showing uh, a vasoconstriction, but that would be happening. And then the second phase would be um, platelets start adhering, this is a little bit of a review, start adhering to collagen fibers in the cut edge area, and they start aggregating, forming a temporary plug called a platelet plug, and that actually helps to stop the blood from bleeding. But then ultimately, the only way to really stop the blood is for fibrinogen to become uh, fibrin. And once it becomes fibrin, it'll actually form into a clot and then it will allow the cells to be able to heal and be back to normal happy happy clam so i hope you enjoyed uh, this video on hemostasis thanks for watching